My grandfather was a, a doctor by profession. He owned the place and had a manager on it. And um, he always had the idea that one of the paddocks on the place, he'd have it as a wildlife refuge. So he was obviously, um, not that I really ever talked to him about it, but he obviously put a, a strong emphasis in, on, the, on the environment. Uh, and over time, I've um, become attached to that myself. Today we're at a 6,000 acre grazing property uh, called Brooklyn uh, at 12 Mile, um, which is near Wellington in central New South Wales. Um, and at, we're, we're at the property um, of a farmer called Peter Barton that has been managing his property for biodiversity and conservation values for about 15 years. And by doing so, he's been able to recover a, a population of the small purple pea um, by grazing it in a way that's sustainable. It really does stand out that he's, he's done a great job here. He's been uh, time control grazing with his stock. In other words, a, a planned rotation giving his country rest. And we've just um, been up onto one of his paddocks where he's got some rather rare species of, of plants. And that's testament to his grazing management and to the system that he's using to monitor his grazing management. Originally I was sort of interested in the cell grazing idea after reading Alan Savory's book and it was very very hard in those days to get any information except by um, paying the money and doing the course so yeah that's what got me into it and um, what I didn't realise that the the course was so much more about economics and a little bit on the cell grazing. The main thing that happened was it started uh, um, mobbing up, putting livestock into, into bigger mobs, using the infrastructure they had, um, changing the, the cost structure, um, getting rid of a lot of enterprises that weren't making any money, like uh, um, growing hay, growing fodder crops, growing other crops and concentrating on a few few core enterprises which were profitable. There's, there's a lot of ways to make money and it doesn't have to be to the detriment of the landscape. I think that's the big thing I've learned as I've got more involved in agriculture and got a bit older in the system here yeah, that we don't have to uh, push the landscape to the absolute limits to make money out of it. I think it's just really exciting to see someone like Peter that had so much vision so long ago and the way that he's been able to integrate the management of biodiversity within his farming system, both in terms of the grassy box woodland ecosystems that he's got and, and um, the threatened species that he has within those, but also the way that he's managing to, to recover biodiversity in the productive areas of his farmers. Nature is a, is a wonderful thing in the way it, it recovers from adversity. And what's exciting me lately is that uh, some of these changes that I'm seeing now, I, I didn't think I'd ever see in my lifetime, but I'm observing them. And I think hopefully if I live another 30 years or 20 years, I'll, I'll observe them exponentially from now on. I love watching that, I love walking, I love seeing that, I love observing that. It's a, I feel as if I'm doing something reasonably right. I don't know all the answers, but I'm doing a bit of good, maybe, yeah. <laughs>